set of stairs up one side, walk down the other side, and I found myself at the top of it looking down, and I couldn't hold the crap, what am I doing? And people were passing alongside of me, and I had way too much pride to walk my bike down. I really was the only one to walk my bike down, but I couldn't do it. So I held my breath, I drew my to my bike, and I think I screamed on the way down. But this is where I learned how to choose a free ride course. Um, at that race, I also took my first hand up, and I learned that if you don't hydrate properly with the race, it becomes really hard to swallow those whistles. And there's a very special sort of panic that sets in when you realize that you might die in your first hand race because you don't have the coordination to pedal your shoe at the same time. Um, and I also realized that uh, the barriers that are made of PVC pipe hurt when you run into them. Um, but this is also one of the things that I'd like to do. It's actually really cool at this race. It's one of my favorite numbers. Season. I've been back and forth for two years one wrong, and um, on the last lap, I ran myself headlong into a barrier, basically face planted for it. Um, got back up, ran up the hill, but I dropped my chain, and this girl that passed me, and she noticed that I had a mechanical issue. I knew, like, reading through everything. People in races will stop and wait for all the mechanical issues, but it's like something you can fill a jersey in for, you don't put someone in 20 minutes place or random. So she waited for me, and I was just like, look, I'm a giant bird, she just go. And she waited, and we battled it out for us to clap, and it was awesome. It was a better race for me, but it was better for her. And at that point, like, I was just so amazed to find that there were people with that sort of sense of sportsmanship all the way down to one of the beginner's ranks, and then I was just like, okay, this is fantastic, I've got home. Despite the fact that on my way home, I was so tired and hungry, and I thought I would um, but, I mean, that was it. That was the big hurdle that I really needed really to keep myself doing that first race. Um, the rest of the season wasn't really as dramatic or adventurous. Um, the stories that I have from them basically start to become, oh, I fell over less, and I kind of started catching girls that always beat me, and things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be really dramatic or ridiculous. Part of my goal was adventure, and I sort of got that out of my first race. Um, but. That's sort of how that went. And, and honestly, all the crazy things I did, I kept taking the metro the races. And the rest of the races, it actually turned out to be a pretty decent idea. Um, because you get to warm up on your way to the race. Um, you don't have to put your car away, your gas money, your money parking, or you're driving yourself there or anything like that. It's kind of really relaxing. Um, just the great scheme of things. Don't do what I did and ride every single race against the seat inside. It's a lot harder than it should be. Um, which, I mean, Truly, I knew better than that by my third race, but it took me until about halfway through the season to finally accept that I should let the snare out of my tires. Um, and so, yeah, the point of this is that you can go into it and not have any idea of what you're doing. You can do it wrong, you can learn from it, and still get an awful lot out of it. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of where I was coming from. I think there's so much that I can say about my first race. I wanted to stick to the first race. And Sort of go from there. Um, I debated whether or not I was going to go to children's show and cover adults, but um, basically my cyclocross mantra over the last year was um, magic school bus. Because even though it wasn't about cyclocross, this was what had right. Take chances, make mistakes, get messed. <laughs> Um, before, we, uh, before I get started, if everybody wants to put their name and email address down here, um, there is a free training plan that everybody can get uh, after today on trainingpeaks.com. Um, I'm a cycling coach, and I help a lot of people you know, prepare for and you know, do well at races. Cyclocross is fun. Um, you know, it's a totally different scene than road racing. I am primarily a road racer. I am a terrible cross racer. Um, I fall way more than I should. It's really muddy. I fell this morning. That's my first one of the season. Right there and there. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how good a shape you're in. You're going to fall. You, you know, you're going to get a little bloody. You're going to get a little muddy, but it's a ton of fun. Um, walking to your first race. Um, you know, you might feel like you want to throw up at the end of it. It's you know going as hard as you can for a half hour in the cat four, uh, cat four or five race, and uh, you know there's a lot you can do to prepare yourself to be ready for that, so that your body's ready to go with that effort. 
So you, know, you don't have to suck the fun out of it, but putting a little structure into um, your riding schedule, you don't even need to call it a training plan, but you're all cyclists here, you ride your bike multiple times a week, if not every day during the week. Um, and putting a little structure into it, and at the very least, going hard on some days, going easy on other days, will do you um, a world of good. Um, a lot of reps going into the season. So if you want to get organized, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You know, at the very least, you can you know, draw yourself a paper calendar. Uh, or use a Google calendar, or use trainingpeaks.com, which is a free or pretty inexpensive, depending on how you want to use it, um, calendar system that allows you to put uh, workouts in there, emails, you know, to upload data into it. But you, know, that's, you don't have to get into that. But the good um, thing about it though, the Chicago Cross Cup is uh, 12 races. So if you wanted to do you know, all of that or some of that, you know, that's a lot of racing. It's at least 12 weeks of racing. You want to prepare for that. So, and if you wanted to start racing this weekend, you can. Relay Cross is happening. You can easily do 20 races in a season, um, you know, starting this coming weekend all the way through the end of December. Um, this race. Every weekend except um, Thanksgiving, I believe, you wanted to. Um, so that's a lot of racing, and you need to prepare yourself to get through that. So, you know, if you go back to your paper calendar you draw out, or on your Google calendar, you put all the races in there that you plan to do, the kind of classic way to uh, do a training plan would be so, let's say that you, know, you want to do really well for Jackson Park. Um, for Chicago Cycle Cross Cup, um, you get a place, you get all up the line every week based on the points you get, uh, that you get based on what uh, placement you get in the race before. So you want to do really well at Jackson Park. You want to come out swinging so that for the rest of the racing series, you get um, a good call up and you don't have to start all the way at the back. So if you put uh, that on the calendar at uh, September 29th, you went back three weeks. Uh, start the second week of uh, September. Um, so if you start the first week of September and you do you know, a nice, easy uh, week of like long two-hour rides or so, you give yourself a nice aerobic base and get used to your cycle cross bike and you know, just get moving. Then in your second week after that, start adding in what are called intervals. And the intervals get progressively harder um, as you come into the race and you might take a couple easy days off going into the race. Hopefully, you're not going to throw up in these first race. Now, setting up a training uh, week, if, um, you know, for a half, four, five race, you know, you're looking at a half hour race. So your workouts really don't need to be more than two hours tops. Usually, an hour to an hour and a half is all you need. Um, you would want to do, you would start the uh, week on Monday. That would be a nice, easy day, maybe completely off or just riding to work. Tuesdays, you do some sort of interval, and this is the classic program, and this is, you know, some people do it different than others, but this is what works for 95% of people. Um, Tuesdays, you do an interval. Now, an interval is um, just adding some structure to your workouts. You might do a 20 minute warm up, you know, just spinning easy, getting the blood moving, and then you would, um, for example, do something like five minutes hard, or, and, you know, then recover for two minutes. Um, easy. And you can define hard and easy in a lot of different ways. If you have a heart rate strap, um, you can train in zones. Heart rate zones, the classical five zone system goes um, zone one is recovery, zone two is endurance, zone three is tempo, zone four is VO2, and that's kind of where you're going to be at for the you know, in entire uh, race. Your full half hour there is going to be you know, red line basically. Zone five would be anaerobic. That's when your body's working without oxygen, really. You're just burning energy you have stored in your muscles. And um, that's what's creating that uh, lactic acid burn that you might feel. Um, and your heart rate takes a lot of time to actually get into zone five. So when you, when you see zone five on a training plan, if you guys sign up for the free training plan, you'll see zone five on there. And if you have a heart rate um, strap on, know that you might not actually even get into um, zone five because your body takes a while to um, actually get up there. Just go as hard as you can. Now, if you don't want to use um, a heart rate strap, you can go off of what's called perceived exertion. And it's you know just like an added level of sophistication from hard and easy. 
So you know, if it goes on a scale of one to ten, like if you're at the doctor's office and, and you know they have the little like uh, smiley face chart, one through ten, how much does it hurt? Same exact idea. So you know, the smiley face, you know, number one, it's nice and easy. You're tooling around in the easiest gear you can. Um, your heart rate is probably you know at like 90 or 100 maybe. Um, zone two, you know, it's still you know really nice. You know, your heart rate's getting up a little harder. You're going a little faster. Um, zone three and four, your heart rate's going to be, um, that's a good endurance zone, and your heart rate's going to be, maybe, everybody's different, but around like 130s or so, and that's where you're going to get a big aerobic boost. Um, and you want to uh, do some time in your endurance zones and build a base for your body to work off of, and, you know, you're going to get a lot of strength from that endurance zone and uh, save yourself a lot of pain later. Um, tempo. Uh, it's uh, like a PE five or six. You're getting really sweaty. Something you can hold for you know an hour or more, um, and uh, you know you know maybe you have like a straight face on the smiley face gauge. Um, once you go into VO two, that peak uh, uh, exertion is like seven or eight. That's a cool race pace. Um, you're you know sweating hard, you're breathing hard, breathing out of your mouth. It's hard to pay, um, keep, keep your focus and keep going. It kind of hurts a little bit. You know after. 10 minutes of that, you kind of feel like you want to quit and throw up. But you know, if you've been training properly, you know, that throw up feeling hopefully goes away after the first couple weeks and you're able to continue working in that zone. Going into a perceived exertion of 9 or 10, these are like 30 second efforts. You're sprinting out of the corner. Um, you only are in uh, that zone for you know, small amounts at a time. You go up there and then you cover down and you're able to go up and down and up and down again. And that's what your training will look like. That's what your racing should feel like too, where you're sitting at like seven or eight for uh, five minutes, and then you might sprint a few times, you know, up to that nine or ten. Then uh, you come down to like a nice uh, level two recover for um, like you know another you know five to two minutes at least, and then do it again, you know, five minutes, and then sprint a few times at the end. Um, so you want to do stuff like that. That's like a really rough, super brief, not even really well said for, uh, you know, version of what an interval might look like. But you want to do those on Tuesdays and Thursdays and uh, have recovery in between on Wednesday. So you need to give your, time, your body time to recover from hard intervals on Tuesday and Thursday. Friday, again, um, you want it to be either you're in off or a um, nice ride to work, you know, it's like a new day, and that's really good. Um, all, almost all the races for the Chicago Cycle Cross Cup um, are on Sunday. There are certain weekends that there are uh, Saturday and Sunday races, um, but, you know, for ease right now, we're just going to talk about the race being on Sunday. Um, Saturday is an important day to be ready for Sunday. Um, you know, you want to wake up, go get a nice, easy ride in of, of an hour um, with some hard efforts, in, but nothing that you're going to feel the next day. Just enough to kind of turn the race engine on, think about the race uh, the next day, and get uh, your heart, you know, um, primed so that it can go perform the next day. We call that like a leg opener day. So it's nothing you're going to feel the next day, but just getting ready for the next day. And then on Sunday, you're going to do your race, and it's 30 minutes all out. So if your race is, do you know what time the 4-5 go off? 45. 2.45. So you know, they go off at 2.45 every single Sunday. So you know that you need to um, you know, wake up that morning like you normally do. Um, depending on where the race is, you got to drive there. You want to get there. If you're at 245, you want to get there probably at 145 at the very latest. So you can register, get your number pinned up, get the change, and then get a warm-up in. And you want to do a warm-up pretty similar probably to um, your leg opener day uh, on Saturday. You know, but probably a little shorter. Um, and maybe even a little harder. You know, uh, the old adage is the uh, shorter your race, the longer your warm-up should be. So you know, it's a half hour race. If you got there with only an hour to spare. You know, that doesn't leave you a lot of time to uh, warm up. But you want to, um, you know, get like 20 minutes, you know, ideal situation. You want to do like 5 to uh, 15 minutes, getting your legs nice and easy. And then get um, a 5-minute uh, effort probably in that, like, you know, 
seven to eight um, PE um, at like VO2 effort uh, level. <coughs> Recover totally from that, do some uh, high cadence, where you're spinning your legs really fast sprints, and then cool down 15 minutes or so. You've got your, um, your body ready to go, you're trying to ready to get on the line, and then you go through the race. And when you're going through the race, you're going to feel things that you did in your uh, interval uh, all week before. You're going to feel, you know, holding that seven to eight perceived exertion through the flats, and then, you know, you're kind of coasting into a corner, and getting through the corner, you're sprinting out of it as hard as you can to get back up to speed, and you're holding that seven to eight perceived exertion again, stuff like that. And then through the technical sections, you're hopefully able to coast, cover a little bit. And um, doing intervals on Tuesday and Thursday preps your body to be able to do that. Um, you want to, you want to train your body so that it can work really hard, heart rate gets up really high, and then as you're coasting through some corners, you're able to recover down a little bit, you relax a little, your heart rate's able to start pumping some blood and uh, flush some of that lactic acid out of your legs and you're ready for the next hard section. Um, so, you know, in skills during uh, your inter intervals during the week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Wednesday. Um, cyclocross is the most skill-based discipline of cycling out there. There's so many different things that you have to be ready to do on the bike that you'll never do on a road bike or a track bike. Um, there's uh, barriers, sharpest turns you'll ever do on a bike. Um, there's run-ups like you mentioned, stairs and then a, uh, a ramp down, or even just ramp to ramp over. Um, you know, stuff like that, you need to really be comfortable on your bike. So during all these intervals, if you're doing them on your cross bike, you really want to try and make it like a race. Do you want to set up a little course in the park, you know, know that this tree you're going to turn, you know, do 180 degrees around this tree, a right turn at this left, uh, left at this tree, and um, be ready to learn how to corner fast and sharp. Um, you want to practice your mounts and dismounts, um, running over barriers, you know, just stick in front of you, make an imaginary barrier, and practice doing all that. Now, um, one of the beautiful things about being in Chicago is that we have all these organized cross practices. So if you really wanted to, if you don't, you don't have to go and make it longer for every um, for your entire season. It helps. It really focuses you and makes you, you know, just that much more prepared and relaxed on race day, which goes a long way uh, for racing. But um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there's practices at Cricket Hill um, every morning and evening. I think um, somebody runs um, Johnny Sprockets is Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. at Cricket Hill. Um, I don't know who does Tuesday evening. For Blacks does. Um, you do, Jay does uh, Wednesday mornings, 7 a.m. again at Cricket. Um, that, who, does anybody do Wednesday night? Not yet. Not yet. And then there's Thursday as well. If you show up to Cricket Hill at 7 a.m. or like 6 p.m., um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, if you pick one of those times every day, you can go out there and find a group of people. And it's so much fun. It's the best way to train is just to chase people around the course. And the, Fastest way to get fast is to chase fast people. Um, if they didn't uh, take that quarter, see how they did it. You can do it too. So um, you don't have to make a training plan. It really does help. But um, you have the luxury of being able to show up to Cricket Hill three times a week and get a good workout in. But just know that Tuesdays, you want to go hard. Wednesdays, maybe you're trying something new and going fairly easy. Um, and uh, Thursdays, go hard again. Um, that's the basic structure of any training plan, and uh, making sure that you give yourself enough rest is kind of the secret. Um, you know, me personally, in my background, getting into racing, I trained every day super, super hard. I thought it was what I had to do to get fast. And I think I did that for um, two years and, and with mediocre results, nothing to show for it, and I was wondering what the hell's wrong with me. I'm putting all this work, time, and effort into riding my bike and not getting anything to show for it. And it, before I got a coach, and you know, I learned some lessons, and I realized, you know, I can't, I can't be on all the time. You got to take some time off, recover from your hard effort, and be ready to go again. Uh, you know, if they have. What? For those of us who don't know, where's Cricket Hill? Oh, Cricket Hill is uh, in Montrose Harbor. Um, it is off uh, Montrose in the lakefront, basically. It's that big hill, the one hill on the north, on the north side. <laughs> it's, 
if you Google it, it comes up on Google Maps. Um, so, if any, um, so everybody who put their email down, they're going to get a little informational email about how to get a free um, training plan and training peaks. Um, it's everything's free. You sign up for a free version of Training Peaks, and then there's a coupon code uh, there to uh, get the training plan for free. You know, Training Peaks itself is just a blank calendar, and you put stuff in there, or a coach puts stuff in there, or you buy a training plan for Training Peaks. Um, a tool that's really good to have if you do plan on using Training Peaks, which I'm sure a lot of you might have, is a cycling computer. Um, you can either manually load your uh, metrics from that ride, your distance, your time, average speed, heart rate data. Um, and if you have something like a Garmin 500 or a Polar heart rate monitor, you're able to plug those into your computer and upload the heart rate data. And um, then it'll actually tell you exactly how hard you went. And you can look at a lot of different metrics and you can look at the graphs and GPS data if you have it and all that stuff. Um, and it's a good way to keep tabs on yourself. And like once you really learn, you can kind of see yourself getting tired. And you know, I need to take a week off here. You know, like TSS is called um, training stress score. So it will uh, look at your heart rate data, and there's an algorithm, and it assigns certain number of values to how hard you went. And um, you know, it you know, and once you hit a certain threshold, and once you know your body well, um, or your coach tells you. Um, you know that you need to take time off. But um, another thing which I didn't get into yet, you know, we talked about the average training week. Um, the other kind of classical training theory is three weeks on, one week off. So you can go three weeks hard and then take a week nice and easy, recover. You can maybe even race that weekend too, and then start another three week block of training again, and then, you know, recover again on the fourth week. Um, and that is um, just kind of a classical training uh, philosophy. And if anybody wants to uh, try out the uh, training peaks uh, plan, um, it will kind of give you that structure nice and easy, free for a month. And uh, you can, you know, maybe copy um, for the rest of the weeks moving forward if you want. But um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it'll make it a lot more fun if you're, you know, physically ready to go out there and race and having a plan really helps you do that. Any questions? Otherwise, that's all I have. Burnout. So, burning out. <laughs> it's uh, when it's part physical, mainly mental. Um, you will, you know, be working really hard for three, four, five weeks racing every weekend. It's a 12-week racing series. If you try and go into every single one of those races on your top game, you're, you know, if you're not drinking during the week, you know, you're getting eight, nine hours of sleep, and your friends are wondering if you died. Um, you know, you're not going to. Uh, if you do that every single week. Um, you're probably mentally first. You're gonna get tired, and you're gonna hate riding your bike, and you're gonna put it away in the closet and never look at it again for the rest of the season. Um, and that's why it's really, really important to use that kind of three weeks on, one week off sort of uh, philosophy, so that you have time off the bike, and you get hungry again, get back on the bike, and do well. And you have to go into a cyclocross, especially your first cyclocross season. Know that you're not going to, you know, be winning races probably. I mean, you could be a phenom right off the bat when your first race. Odds are you're not. Odds are you're going to bash into a barrier, fall over, you know, bust your chin open, and you know, be muddy and bloody, and you know, maybe cry a little. Who knows? Um, it's, uh, you know, just no. But it's still fun. And everybody out there is on the course and bringing cowbells at you, throwing bacon in your face, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but if you do that every single week, um, you know you got to kind of stay mentally prepared for how hard racing is, and give yourself breaks to avoid that. Any other questions? Yeah, if you find yourself playing, uh, I don't know, kind of being like all worn down um, and bonking or anything like that, not necessarily in the race, but just sort of. Yeah. That would be a sign of burning out, um, and that means that you just need to start riding easier. 
Another mantra is cycling is ride how you feel. Um, and another mantra is uh, ride slow, race fast. You know, you can't always go fast. And if you if you wake up um, on Tuesday morning and you're supposed to, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning, you woke up and you're planning on going to Chris Hill, but you're tired and you just don't feel like it, don't if it's your third, fourth weekend, stay in bed, sleep in. That's more important than going out and doing little to your practice for the day. Um, you know, because then uh, for the weekend you're gonna be even more tired and you're gonna keep on pushing through it. Thanks, guys. Ta -da.